Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a BSL Season 13 semifinal match between Masuchi and White. Upper left-hand corner, we have Masuchi starting as the Red Zerg. Upper right-hand corner, we have White starting as the White Protoss. I appreciate that he does this. I also need to give congratulations to Microsoft for acquiring Blizzard, which, considering a lot of troubles that Blizzard has had, particularly in the realm of... Uh, personnel and ethics uh hopefully that will improve the situation there that i'm not sure what that means for brood war i think honestly we should proceed per normal which is let's try to find ways to fund ourselves and make it happen uh but that does bode well for potential starcraft 3 so we'll see how it works and potential adjustments to blizzard culture we'll see i feel like activision i don't know maybe this that was kind of the disappointing part because i always wanted to blame activision back in the day but hearing all of the indiscretions of blizzard and it hurts because i care like i care about this community i care about this game and it feels like what other people are doing out in the field just being jerks uh has such a huge negative impact on this community and has nothing and it's almost like i don't know anyway masuchi opening up with a nine pool he wants to go ahead and get early aggressive i'll focus on this instead of like crappy stuff that's happening in the background uh see how it works out masuchi if you did not catch the games versus master a go to revolution veer's channel he's also covering chobo league while i'm doing this i might try to help him uh, with that side of things forge first opener white has faced a lot of protoss on the way here where masuchi went through master Ray. so he's kind of maybe more in his comfort zone can repeat preparation and also, he ended up beating Master Ray in the set of five. And Master Ray, of course, Hasu League champion previously, got close to being Hasu League champion uh, in most of these runs. First cannon warping in. It looks like that drone is going to be able to slip by to at least get scouting information. Sometimes that can be super annoying. And actually, he's going to go ahead and work on that cannon. Hatchery being grabbed behind this. Is he going to go for that with the... I can't imagine he's still going to go for this with the Zerglings. That would be crazy. Six Zerglings making their way across. I think that cannon was planted fairly rapidly. The drone trying to do some damage. This drone might lose its life. Yeah, now backing out. And an Nexus being planted down. So the Zerglings at the very least can attempt to deny Zergling scouts or probe scouts as far as a follow-up. They're going to run for it. The drone getting blockaded. They're going for the cannon. Are they going to get it? He gets it. Oh, Masuchi. I take it back, so with the extra damage that the drone was able to execute, a, li a little bit of, what a hero drone, battle drone, so two Zerglings sneaking through, that's certainly going to force additional cannons, additional stuff, and this is really going to make White's life hell in the interim. Natural expansion up, one, some nice battle probes coming off the line, but this is a lot of disrupted mining time. And the Zergling, at the very least, going to get scouted, uh, scouting information, 9 o'clock base has also been grabbed behind this. And there is potential for more Zerglings to flood through. So DM White's going to have to invest in more cannons. No additional Zerglings flooding across. Keep in mind, White doesn't know that. Which is actually unfortunate because that might have been a game ender right there. The these This is five probes worth of mining that has been off the line to deal with this single Zergling in the interim. A simulator grabbing, uh, being plopped down. A pylon being plopped down. Nexus coming online. Looks like that cannon is going to warp in. The Zergling being taken out. Actually, there's the probe. Battle probe, what a hero. But I gotta give it to the drone. Knocking down those shields, allowing... I didn't even realize that was a thing. Like, you could attack it with the drones, and that gives you enough room to go ahead and get the Zerglings through. Layer morphing. So Masuchi right now, off to the races. Another probe is moving out, so I think Masuchi should be able to get the scouting information. The question is, is what can he do with it? Thus far, Masuchi can move to three hatch Hydralisk, or sorry, three hatch Mutalisk. And with all of the delay in mining, White might have his work cut out for him. The probe's still able to sneak through. He's going to get a look at the lair. And the thing is, is even if with that scout, Masuchi opts not to go three hatch Mutalisk, what he can still do is go for that four hatch uh, follow up. And I don't know that White's going to be in a position for quite some time. To field any counter aggression. He's actually not upgrading weapons one. He does have two zealots out. Hasn't grabbed his second gas, getting that initial Stargate 
planted. So he actually might be able, especially with a little bit of delay on that Spire, might be able to get an Overlord kill. If he can find an Overlord. Maybe sack this one on the front. But we'll see what Masuchi opts to do, whether he is going to slide more into that 4-hatch or if he's going to go for the uh, pure... I think he's going to slot for that 4-hatch because, as you can see, he hasn't grabbed that second gas. And he's starting to transfer drones to the 9 o'clock location. Usually, if you're going to go with more open, aggressive, mutalisk play in the mid-game, you'll, you'll see that second gas being grabbed. So I think this is going to, yeah, turn into more... Uh, yeah, there's the 4th hatchery at the natural expansion. Keep in mind the winner of this is going to go on to face Thebus in the finals. Second gas now being grabbed for white. I think he's going to, and actually weapons one as well. Is he going to go double Stargate? I think he's going to go at least a Dark Templar, High Templar style build in the midst of this. Evolution Chamber at the 9 o'clock location. Hydral is then on the front. So Spire going to finish. We're probably just going to see an initial pair of Scourge. But should be out there to deal with that. Well, potentially deal with the Corsair. That Overlord very exposed. So I think this Overlord, at the very least, is going to get wiped out. Zerglings, unfortunately, cannot attack air. So they just have to watch it happen. That must be so depressing for a Zergling. Like, Zerglings are basically like little alien attack dogs, right? So just to watch an Overlord get picked out of the sky. Like, th that's, you know, their leash, effectively. It's got to be the worst. Anyway, initial Scourge are out. So the Corsair needs to be very wary. Oof. Actually might have some trouble actually getting surrounded on both sides, getting a single shot off. Is it going to be able to get out? Nice dancing on White's part. But the Scourge, oh, very close. And White wants to keep that alive. It looks like they did get bugged out. So he is going to be able to find everything at the 9 o'clock base, seeing another hatchery plop there. But it gets, yeah, it's critical to keep that alive. These additional Scourge going to go ahead and wander in and get the additional scouting information and upon seeing that cybernetics core whirling i wouldn't be surprised to see well let's see if he does get the scout one zer one scourge down both scourge down so only sees the gateway and sees the stargate i'm not sure that he got eyes there moving up towards a potential level one weapons legs weapon attack it's probably going to happen around the nine minute mark is pocketing some corsairs in the upper right is respecting a potential mutalisk swap but going a lot of gateways to follow. And this has, I think, been the most successful thing I've seen comparatively these days. Speed being upgraded to deal with this is, yeah, just get an overwhelming attack force. Honestly, I feel like getting the overwhelming attack force and getting a big supply lead and then grabbing your third has been more successful for Protoss. Rather than getting the overwhelming attack force and trying to dive into your Zerg opponent who has really good SimCities and Hydralisks in uh, position to deal with all of it. The Zerglings here currently just waiting on potential... I think that was the seven-minute move out with those Zerglings, actually, to see if the Zealots were incoming at that stage of things. Templar Archives being plopped down as well, potentially to get High Templar. But usually, yeah, it's just a delay from here. Uh, Masuchi possibly going to follow up so he, he's not moving towards Lurkers. He is getting the range. He's playing mostly defensively, but he's building an awful lot of Hydralisks. So I wouldn't be shocked once he gets Hydralisk speed if he tries to turn this into a contain before White has an opportunity to really respond. He is grabbing an additional hatchery, which is going to go ahead and put him up at the six count. The Corsair is moving out right as the Hydralisks are out of position to contend with it, which means a lot of these overlords might get picked off. And they do have level one weapons, which means they chew through these overlords very rapidly. Single high, like that's, yeah, four down for free. But in the meantime, Masuchi engaging, wanting to bust on the front door. Are these zealots going to be enough? The zealots moving out, getting a decent surround thus far. A Dark Templar trying to be produced, but Overlords are there. Additional Corsairs, unfortunately, get engaged with the Hydros there, but they're still getting Overlord kills. But the zealots thinning out, and there's also a Battle Drone on the front, which means you know Masuchi is serious. Only a Dark Templar remaining. The cannon's warping in, but it might be too little too late. I don't think Psystorm is, in fact, upgraded. The Dark Templar picked off very rapidly, and Masuchi, with a timing, might have done it. Just going to walk up with these Hydralisks into the main, picking off the High Templar. And that is it. They didn't even have Psystorm upgraded. And now, the Hydralisks sitting on top of the gateways. And as long as, yeah, they keep dancing and trading out, they're going to be able to pick off a lot. Probes coming off the line to try to defend this. Get to the natural expansion. Several of them exploding on the way. 
And so the Corsair is just having to sit. Yeah, they did a good job of killing Overlords in the background of this. But Masucci just needs to micro and continue to macro. It looks like he was able to field another group of Hydalus. He's moving that out to the front to follow. And this looks like a game-ending blow. So the cannons managed to warp in behind this. Two additional cannons. That's going to put... So as far as a win tactic... White trying to box into his base to make the best of a terrible situation. Half the supply of Masuchi currently. Behind... Or actually a little bit ahead in worker count. All the gateways now down. The Zealots... The last two being wiped out. But the thing is, is even if Masuchi just dead it, Yeah, there's GG from White. Because even if he's able to hold all this, with the next grouping of Hydalists, he could have just done a pincer attack and killed the can... Like, and even if he didn't do that, he could just macro behind everything else and keep the Hydalists inside the base. So game one goes to Masuchi. The Corsair is moving out and getting a lot of damage done, but Masuchi having the Hydalists... And that shows you the challenges for Protoss these days in dealing with this particular build order from Zerg. Well executed by Masuchi. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.